BAE had a slush fund. They paid more than $100 million, I think, uh, in benefits, uh, in cash in kind, to primarily Prince Turkey, the head of the Air Force, but also to a whole galaxy of Saudi defense attaches, uh, visiting officials, Air Force commanders, when they came to this country. Everybody got treats and trips. Um, if they wanted to stay in a luxury hotel with their wife and family, they got it. If they wanted a big car, they got it. This is the monthly invoicing procedure. This top document is a copy of the final invoice produced for the 31st of December 2001. The total for that particular month was £621,858.48. It's coded. It doesn't say an awful lot. It says accommodation services and support for overseas visitors. Um, then there is an invoice for a corresponding amount for PB, which stands for Principal Beneficiary, and that would be a member of Prince Turkey's family or staff, and in this case this is for £403,000. And then the next sheet relates to PN, which would be for Princess Nora bin Sultan, and then this is followed by PF, which is Prince Faisal bin Turkey, their son. Of course, there was hundreds of individual invoices supporting all of these charges, and they were summarized in a statement. Now, this is the statement for this month, December 2001, which you can see that it has an enormous variety of different items on it. There's hotel accommodation, there's parking at the Carlton Tower Hotel, there's accommodation at the Ritz-Carlton uh, Tyson's Corner in Washington, um, and there's there's even an item here on the, of Nicorette gum for £869. So it's very comprehensive. It covered quite a wide variety of items, and this, this details it. And you see, it totals up to the total amount of the master invoice, which was £621,000, which is verified by this amount here. And here is the our uh, Travers World's bank statement um, from Barclays Bank, which confirms that on the 16th of January, a direct credit was received from BAE Systems uh, um, for a total amount of, again, matching at exactly £621,858.48. There's an absolute mountain of evidence here. And what you can see is that the British ambassadors in Jeddah were writing long reports to London to tell them everything they knew about corruption. So in this very important document, the British ambassador in Jeddah, Willie Morris, in 1970, told London, the question of corruption is obviously crucial, and I've therefore dealt with it frankly and at some length. And later in the same document, he says, there is no single golden key or golden fixer to open the door to an orderly, if crooked, world of arms sales in Saudi Arabia, it is a jungle inhabited by beasts of prey in which one must move with caution and uncertainty. That was 30 years ago. Since then, the evidence is that very little has changed. Prince Sultan and his son, Prince Banda, uh, were influential then, and they continue to be influential now. Sultan has, of course, a corrupt interest in all contracts, but this can be serviced by any nationality. Obviously, if you could have a state, a, a state of affairs in which no country uh, bribed, that would be far preferable to what has been going on in the past. But as long as you don't have such a state of affairs, I'm rather in favour of our doing, getting the business. The reason Saudi Arabia buys arms from states like Britain, France and the United States is because really it's unlikely that the arms it buys from them are on their own going to be enough in some circumstances to guarantee the security of the state and the continuing rule of the government of Saudi Arabia. What they also buy is a political commitment from states who have the ability to intervene militarily out of area to prop up that government if the need arises. Well, uh, I, I'm not aware that there's anything Britain can do to keep the Saudi regime in power should either the left or the right, uh, the Conservatives or the Liberals, um, stage a coup in, 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 in Riyadh. Uh, I don't think we can be of any help to the Saudi government. I don't think the Saudi government's any real help to us. Uh, this was always about money. Um, it was about whose money, which money goes where. 
um, the, the contract itself was a creaming, really, of oil revenue from the Saudi people into the pockets of the princes uh, and into the pockets, for that matter, of the British uh, aerospace company. Um, everything about it, to my mind, was unreal. Uh, it doesn't make political sense, it doesn't make commercial sense, it doesn't make defence sense. On the basic sale of the planes themselves, we calculate that the extra payments were in the region of £600 million. But that's only part of the story. Um, we believe that the overall commissions on the Al Yamama deal have been at least 15% and rising up to 30% on all aspects of the deal. What this means is that the total in commission payments over the years may have been as much as £6 billion. One of the documents is a telegram about the negotiations on Al Yamama, which shows that in one year, the price of the tornadoes went from about £16 million to about £21 million, with no explanation given as to why there was such a big price rise, despite the fact they are offering the same equipment. We would signed the OECD Convention opposing corruption. Uh, we lecture the world on corruption. We tell African governments we won't give them aid if they uh, employ corruption. Um, the Serious Fraud Office is allowed to begin an investigation into these payments. And suddenly, just when it's getting near uh, the famous Swiss bank accounts, the government tells it to stop. This is a, a totally unacceptable situation. Our relationship with Saudi Arabia is vitally important for our country in terms of counter-terrorism, in terms of the broader Middle East, and that strategic interest comes first, particularly in circumstances where if this prosecution had gone forward, all that would have happened is that we would have had months, potentially years of ill feeling between us and a key partner and ally, and probably to no purpose. Um, that had we allowed this to go forward, we'd have done immense damage to the, the true interests of this country. And as I say, leaving aside the fact that we'd have lost thousands of highly skilled British jobs and a very, very important business for British industry. Ever since the Serious Fraud Office began this investigation, BAE, the arms company, has been trying to get it shut down. More than a year ago, they went to the Attorney General and said, we're going to lose this contract, will you stop the investigation? Uh, at that time, the Attorney General didn't intervene, the SFO was allowed to carry on. A year later, something happened. What happened was that the Swiss banks notified Wafik Said, one of the middlemen, that they were going to inspect his accounts as part of this investigation. Within days, the sky fell in. Within days, the Saudis were in contact with the British Prime Minister's office. Within days, the British Prime Minister was in contact with the Attorney General. What's going on? This has got to be stopped. Um, the Ministry of Defence um, were in contact with the uh, SFO saying, what's going on? This has got to be stopped. The British Ambassador in Riyadh, Sherrod Cooper Cowles, was called in and uh, he lectured the, 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 the Serious Fraud Office about how the Saudis were furious and this investigation had to be stopped. From every direction, pressure was put on the director of the SFO to halt his investigation. Clearly there was a massive operation underway from BAE Systems uh, to persuade the government to drop the uh, inquiry and the argument from them was that uh, tens of thousands of jobs were at stake. I suspect that the claims were massively exaggerated. The going was getting quite difficult for uh, the leadership in, in Saudi Arabia. The um, Serious Fraud Office had got an order for access to Swiss bank accounts. Uh, so far from any suggestion that this inquiry was going nowhere and was likely to result in um, failure, uh, every indication I had was that it was because the inquiry was making significant progress that it was actually brought to an end. The Saudi ambassador now says that everything has changed in Saudi Arabia and that if there was corruption it was in the past and uh, we're all going to behave differently in the future. This is very hard to credit because the same people are in power now in Saudi Arabia as were 20, 30 years ago and have been throughout all these allegedly corrupt deals. 
It's the Sultan family who are key to this. Prince Sultan was defence minister 40 years ago and has controlled all armed contract ever since and has now risen to become crown prince. His son, Prince Banda, who set up the al Yamama deal, uh, is still national security advisor. He's in a key position. Uh, Sultan's uh, other son, Khalid, uh, has played an important part in the military. Um, it's um, Sultan's uh, son-in-law, uh, Prince Turkey, who ran the Air Force for many, many years. This is the branch of the family that's still absolutely in power. I think it's a moral issue, a political issue and an economic issue. Morally, I think it is wrong to be paying bribes to foreign officials. It means that uh, equipment is bought for the wrong reasons. But it's also uh, an economic uh, judgment because at the end of the day, if this country loses its reputation as a good place to do business, then economically uh, we will suffer damage. It's quite strange that this contract is called Alumama, which means the dove, um, because the dove is a bird of peace, and of course this is uh, an arms contract. However, um, it's certainly been very peaceful because the Al Yamama planes have never been flown in any war that I know about to any successful extent, so <laughs> maybe it, it is peace that they've brought.